Um, uh, many, many years ago, when I was just a boy, um, I was about 13 to be exact, and you know, 13, prepubescent, puberty, I was just beginning to figure out, realize that I wasn't the same as all of the other boys, or at least the boys that I knew. And one of the things that clued me into this was that whenever my mother would leave the house, and I knew it was going to be for more than an hour, the minute I heard that door slam, I would run up the stairs, open her closet door, and lo and behold, what would I find? A closet full of dresses and high heels. And I just tore through them, threw them over my shoulders, on my arms, picked up the heels in both hands, ran into the bathroom, locked the door, the huge half-wall vanity, and I tried every single one of them on. Well, this went on for about two years, and in that time, I thought that I had gone through every dress in my mother's closet. But one day, sitting all the way in the back, kind of hidden off by itself, kind of like I felt once in a while, um, was this cute little black cocktail dress, over the shoulder straps, rhinestone buckles in the back, and I fell in love immediately. <laughs> I was just like, this is the most beautiful thing I have ever seen, and it's in my mother's closet. Most of her stuff was like housewives' dresses. You know, I didn't mind dressing up in that and looking funny and prancing back and forth. So from then on, I would always go into the closet, and I would throw the dresses over my shoulder, but I would always pick that one up, and I would lay it singly over my arm, and I never wore it. I would hold it. I would look at it. I would hold it up. I would put it over myself. I would look in the mirror, but I never put it on. So fast forward about eight years. And I am now dressing up on a regular basis as a woman, even passing sometimes, if any of you are familiar with that term, and um, dancing uh, as a drag queen. I found out that there were other boys that dressed in women's clothes, and they were called drag queens, and I was no different than them. And I was dancing go-go on tops of bars in eight-inch heels. Uh, I was also going to different events, gay pride events. One year I dressed up as Queen Elizabeth, and um, I remember that night very clearly because it was 11 o'clock at night, and I'm walking from my house to my friend's house across the street in full drag, my tiara on, my scepter in my hand, and I'm walking past, and all of a sudden I hear this rustling behind me, and I hear this drunk that's waking up, and he takes one look at me, and I go, you're knighted. And I hear him say, I think I just saw the queen. <laughs> so anyway, I have lots of pictures about this. I'm very out of the closet, literally. So it's a story about closets and skeletons in the closets and closets and closets. And I'm literally out of the closet and um, I have pictures, my whole family knows that I'm gay, my family knows that I dress up in drag, and um, I'm home visiting one day, and my mother is going through her closet, through all of her old clothes. And of course, who does she choose to come up and help her? <laughs> me. Not my two sisters, not my two brothers, me. So she's going through, and she's like, oh, I should get a dress. And she'd look at it, and she said, I don't know about this one. What should I do with it? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. You know, it's kind of ugly. <laughs> um, uh, and then, you know, so, OK, I'll give this one away. And then the next one, oh, I think I'll keep this one. And this goes on for about a half an hour. And all of a sudden, she pulls out a dress. And what dress is it? It is the dress that I 
am in love with, that I have been in love with for 10 years now. She pulls out that little black cocktail dress with the over-the-shoulder straps and the rhinestone snaps in the back, and I'm just like, I don't know what to say. I'm just like, oh my God, she's got the dress. What's she going to do with it? So she's like, pulls it out, and she gets this smile on her face, and I could tell instantly that this dress was special, and it had a meaning to her. And she smiles, and she's looking at it, and she looks at me, and she's looking at it, and she says, this was my prom dress. And I'm like, wow, that's really, that's really sweet. And she still got it. And she goes, yeah. I kept it because all these years because I thought one day one of your sisters would want it, but I don't think that's going to happen. And I don't know what to do with it. And I'm just like, <sighs> I, I could tell you what to do with it. Um, and she's just, you know, looking at it. And she says, I really don't know what to do with it. And then she turns to me and she goes, but I think I know what to do with it. And she looks at me, and she reaches out with the dress in her hands, and she puts it on my lap, and she says, I'm going to give it to someone who I know will love it. <laughs> um, yes, and I'm crying. I have no idea, but I don't think she knows anything about the fact that like, I've been putting her dresses on for 10 years now, and that was the dress I wanted. Um, but anyway, yeah. Um, and. Uh, I wore the dress one more time after that, but that's another story that you'll have to wait for. <laughs> um, and then I passed it on to someone else who I knew would love it. And um, I just want to thank you, and I want to thank my parents who helped me to understand who I am with compassion, love, and no judgment. Thank you. Thank you.